Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. I'm Vash Lombardi, and I'm here to talk about my top 12 defensive tackles today. Um, of course, we're going to talk about each player. I'm going to give a short little breakdown why they are there, ranked ahead or behind each of their peers. Uh, we're going to talk about a player that did not make the list that I liked and a guy that I did not like that didn't make the list. Also, um, as far as quarterback rankings, running back, linebacker, cornerback, safety, those rankings will exist on my Patreon. So y'all can go over there and check them out. I'm not going to be doing a video on them. I, I kind of got some other things in the works between now and draft time. So uh, if you want to see those ranking videos, they will exist on the Patreon. The rest of y'all can kind of look at the top 50 board and piece it up together um, and kind of pull that move off. But um, let's talk about defensive tackles. Let's run this for the cardio. First guy, a player that did not make my list that I am a fan of is uh, Brevion Roy uh, from Baylor. I think he's going to end up playing nose from nose for somebody, and I really have a soft spot for big ass people that can move around really well. I think Brevion is one of those guys that can move around really well, and um, he's probably a guy that'll be like a I don't know, like a fourth or fifth round pick or something like that. I really like him. I think he should be touted a little higher uh, than the rest of these guys, in my opinion. I do think he should be a little higher in the ranks, but we only did a top twelve. Um, so everybody can be there. He could probably be a little, he could probably give you a little more in the, uh, you know, technical side of the game, you know, as, 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 as far as like nuance, D tackle things, he could be a little better there, but I do think he has the physical skills to be a useful defensive tackle in the national football league. Um, so that is that he kind of gave me some Andrew Andrew Billings vibes a little bit, not because of the Baylor, but in terms of him being a bigger nose guy that can move around a little bit. So. That's that. Um, Lakey Foto is not going to be on my list. He just ain't. If you watch my Lakey Foto film session, you should have a good idea of how I feel about the young boy Lakey Foto. Um, so, yeah, he 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 just he just ain't going to be here. I don't think he's he's good enough necessarily. Um, is Brevion Roy a, a a better player than Lakey Foto? Sure. I think Lakey kind of got his hype because of his size and how big he is, but. Uh, I think a lot of people created narratives about him. Like, oh, Vach, he's big and strong and can push the pocket. Well, I've seen a lot of single people block him, a lot of single blocks. Uh, he kind of gets tall in his stance. He doesn't really use his hands very well. He's just a he's a big he's a big dude out there. So not a big fan of Lakey Fotu. He will not be on this list. But let's get into it, man. My top 12 uh, defensive tackles. We're going to start with... Um, with my uh with my bottom nine and just for reference or whatever def defensive tackles are noses so zeros one text and three techs but also three four defensive ends because three four defensive ends are kind of three techs to me it just depends on what scheme you use them in um but i'll be breaking that down a little bit more as i go uh benito jones from old miss he was um he's going to be playing uh one tech for the most part i think he fits nicely in an in an even front playing one tech um, I think he had a pretty good senior bowl. He had some pretty solid tape going up against some SEC talent. Uh, I need a little bit more consistency from him. Sometimes he was really, really good. Sometimes he kind of disappeared a little bit. Um, but one thing that I do like about him is that he is a pocket pusher. Um, athleticism, eh, you know, he's a one tech. What do you want me to say? He, he, he is, in fact, a one tech. Um, he shows some power, you know. Is he a complete player? Not necessarily. There are some nuanced things that he can't work on, but um, Benito Jones is probably going to be like a like a later round guy. But defensive tackles, like later round defensive tackles, I'll take one. I'll go find me a late round defensive tackle and make it work. So give me Benito Jones from Ole Miss. Did I mention that he had a good senior bowl, by the way? I don't know. Moving on. Number 11, Rashard Lawrence. He's going to be playing a three tech. Now, can he play? some three four defensive end possibly but i don't think that's his role three four three 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 four dns do a lot of two gapping punching and reading i more so want rashad lawrence to be penetrating from b gap big strong 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 powerful dude man um he is absolutely a power player now does he have some athletic ability sure um, but that ain't how he wins he doesn't win with quickness he wins with being stronger than you um powerful guy man put him on the inside can he give you pass rush ability i think he can push the pocket a little bit you know like i say he's not going to be a like a nuanced guy that's going to rack up a bunch of sacks for you but if you want b gap in the quarterback's lap then sure um put put lawrence out there and just let him do pocket pushing things you know i don't have a problem with uh lawrence doing any of that at all i'm a big fan of his now justin matabuike we gotta have a conversation right we got to have a conversation in terms of how I feel 
about Justin Matabuike, a lot of my, I would say, disdain for him comes from where people are talking about drafting him at. Um, and a lot of people are saying that Mata, that Justin Matabuike is going to be like a you know second round pick or something like that. I'm not, I wouldn't be very happy about taking Matabuike in the second round. I just wouldn't be. No, sir. Um, now, can I get him in the fourth or something? Can you get him on my on my team as a fourth round pick? I would feel a lot better if he was on my team in the um, in the uh, fourth round. Now, he's a uh, athletic type, but I think he's one of the players that, that's uh, that's going to have to sit out for a year or two to kind of develop. I, he has some solid size, so I don't want to say he's a small guy. But when you look at him on film, he looks small, right? If you look at his numbers, the the weight, like combine nerves help me out. But the numbers say that he's like 6'2", 6'3", like 290 or something. But I don't see that on film at all. He looks really, really small. And I watched the Clemson game, the Alabama game, a couple other games, and he just looks like he gets pushed around a little bit. He's a very sometimes -y player, right? Sometimes he shows you this really good burst, this really good athleticism, and he penetrates really well. He gets upfield. He'll he'll get a sack here and there. He, you know, high effort player, get tackles behind the uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Yes, he does those things. Sometimes, other times he doesn't push the pocket pocket at all. Sometimes he gets, he gets pushed around. Sometimes he's a much more um, horizontal player. I don't really want horizontal players. I hate when my defensive linemen go sideways. Now, there's a bunch of D linemen on this list that go sideways. We'll talk about them when we get there. But Justin Mado, Justin Madubuike is my least favorite sideways going player, if that makes sense to you. So that's that, man. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not for drafting him in the 50s or something. But if he falls into the, like, out of the top 100, then we can have a conversation. Um, Devon Hamilton, uh, one tech from Ohio State, knows or whatnot. Is he going to play a zero? Nah, I think he's an even front one tech guy. Uh, I think he's another senior bowl guy. Could be mistaken about that. Yes, I think that uh, uh, Devon Hamilton is a senior bowl guy, and he was pretty impressive in the senior bowl. What I liked about him at the senior bowl was he did more consistently what I liked about his film at Ohio State. When you watch his Ohio State film, it's two sides of him. It's when he's being physical, pushing the pocket, he's really good. But when he's trying to be quick, he pisses me off and he's a bad player at that point. And I didn't like it very much. But when he got to the senior bowl, he was much more interested in going vertical and pushing the pocket. So it may be like a scheming thing or like a coaching thing. So Devon Hamilton, if you're at uh, if you're at one tech, you line up in a gap and you're being a powerful dude moving forward. I am a fan of you. That's why I got you over Justin Madubuike. I'm a, I am a fan of you. If you're pushing the pocket and going forward, um, maybe Ohio state had you moving sideways. I don't know, but I don't want you moving sideways. My guy be a big, strong nose tackle. And you have a fan in me. Um, Raekwon Davis. He probably has the highest floor. Um, out of the guys that's uh, that's revealed on your screen so far. Now he's a guy that has some some flexibility in terms of. I do think he can be an even front three tech guy. Um, in case y'all don't know what I mean by even and odd front, like um, even fronts, there's an even number of players on the D line, so that'll be four threes, four twos, or whatever. Odd fronts is an odd number, so three three stack, three fours, or whatever. Cool. So when I say even front, I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, four three. So him being an, an even front guy, he would be in 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 B gap. He would be a three tech D tackle. And I think he's solid there. But where I think he would really be best at is in an odd front, in a three four front, playing defensive end because he gets to come off the ball, punch and read people. That's what he's really good at. He's really good at being powerful at the point of attack, not giving up ground, um, planning them, planning them 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 big feet in the dirt and finding the running back then he'll disengage and go make a play um i think he has the highest the highest floor in terms of he can play today now what's his ceiling like i think he's as good as as he's gonna be and that's okay that's okay um he's a probably gonna be i don't know what round you're gonna find him in. I'm, 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 I'm not even gonna pretend to uh say what round you're gonna find these guys in but um Raekwon Davis, man, big fan of him, big fan of him, if that's the scheme that you're running. But I don't like to run 3-4, so I wouldn't put him on my team. But if I was a team that was running a 3-4, he can come play 3-4 defensive end for me. 
Absolutely. Ross Blacklock. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. He's my number seven guy, Ross Blacklock. He's another guy that's, that's probably going to have to sit around and develop for a little bit. I think his year three is going to be way better than his year one. Um, I think he probably has to work on his power a little bit more, but he does have like speed and burst. I would say big boy speed and, and burst and quickness and things like that. That's where he's going to really make his money at. Um, he's one of those guys that he wins on the inside with ball get off and, and things of that nature. Now, is he a pocket pusher? No, not necessarily. I would like for him to be a little stronger. So that may be where his development comes from. Um, he's going to grow up and get in his man body and eat those, eat those, um, peanut butter sandwiches and all that and they're going to get him big put him on that protein and then he'll probably be an even better player than he is year one but as of now as of today when you draft when you draft ross ross blacklock today you're going to get some athleticism but i don't think you get very much push um so he's not balanced in that way so am i am i a fan of ross blacklock sure it just depends on where you get him and how long you anticipate him you know learning things but that's Ross Blacklock. Neville Gallimore is another kind of guy like that, right? He's um, now he's a very interesting player because when you watch his Oklahoma film, they did a bunch of movement, a bunch of gap exchanges. They did a lot of things of him playing um, playing sideways and horizontal. I hate that. I like my D lineman to move forward, attack, and to push pocket. Or I would like for them to stay at the line of scrimmage, punch, read, and disengage. I don't like my I don't like my my D lineman moving sideways. But in Oklahoma. They had Neville Gallimore moving sideways a lot. Excuse me. Uh, Neville Gallimore is um, probably going to be a three-tech for you. I think that's going to be his bet, bet, his best bet because of his athleticism. He's a big athletic dude. Um, but he's also a sometimes player. And y'all know about my relationship with sometimes players. Sometimes he pushed the pocket and can use his power. Other times he doesn't. I think in the senior bowl, he gave you some pretty good examples of him getting upfield and using that quickness to beat people. Um, a lot of these guys are very similar with this next thing I'm about to say. Galmore is one of those guys to where if he beats you off the rip, he beats you. So if he come off the ball with super quickness, he'll defeat your hands and get past you. If he wins immediately, he wins. But if you can recover and get hands on him, he's beat. Right? And that goes for him, Blacklock, Hamilton especially Justin Matabuike. Uh, all those guys kind of fall in that same category. Um, you know, so so they're, they're, they're going to have to learn how to come off the ball, get beat, and then recover from getting beat. But that comes with, you know, what's my second move going to look like? What's my backup plan? What are my second pass rush moves? Or if I get caught up in this run game, can I anchor and get off of blocks? That's another conversation you got to have with yourself about these guys, but... Uh, moving on Jordan Elliott now this is interesting about my Jordan Elliott I think people get my opinions based on people where they're being drafted and you know that's where my emotion comes from when I when I talk about guys so when we were first talking about Jordan Elliott everybody was saying how how much of a first round pick he was and I was like man I'm not seeing it but if we're talking about Jordan Elliott in the in the context of being a late second early third round guy I really like Jordan Elliott right there that's a conversation that, that, that we can actually have. And as the draft process went on, you know, more people saying, okay, cool. Jordan Elliott, probably like a late second round guy, early, early third. And then that made me become a fan of Jordan Elliott. He's going to be a first round. Uh, ooh, pardon me. what I say? He's going to be a, uh, a, uh, one take. <laughs> I had, I had the number one in my head. Pardon me. He's going to be a one take one, 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 um, one take nose tackle. Um, I don't think he's going to do much 3-4 work. I think he's going to be 4-3-1 tech for the most part. Uh, what I like about him, don't get me wrong, man. He looks slow. He, he He's a sometimes guy in terms of his athleticism. I've seen some plays where he can move around a little bit. But for the most part, I've seen most plays where he's not moving around very well. But he's very powerful, and he can get hands on limbs, and he can manipulate and move people and use his power to, to, to really get pushed. That's what I like about it. We talk about these D tackles getting pushed. Jordan Elliott gets pushed. And if he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, he ends, up be he ends up beating people. So I'm a fan of Jordan Elliott on that side of the game. I'm not a big fan of one techs altogether, but if I can get a one tech late, uh, or later, like, you know, round three or something. If I can get a one tech later and he can give me some solid production, then by all means, man, sign me up for Jordan Elliott. I'm a fan of his. He is a top 50 player on my um, on my big board, I believe. So 
just putting that there. Um, James Lynch from Baylor. I saw some reports about him being a first round player. I ain't saying that necessarily. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know which of these guys are going to be first round picks. I expect my top three guys to be first round picks, but, um, I don't know where the hell the rest of these guys are going to end up going, but, um, James Lynch, he gives you some position flexibility to where he can play three, four defensive end, and he can play, uh, three tech and an even front. So I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of that. Absolutely. Um, which one do I think he's better at? I think he's better as a three, four defensive end. He's a, he's a solid guy, powerful guy, pocket pushing guy. Um, he gets sack production. I think most of his sacks came from one game. I forgot that one game I was watching, like Texas or something. I don't know. I forgot the game. But he got most of his sacks. He got like three, four sacks in one game or something like that. And I think that's where the bulk of his of his numbers came from. He kind of wandered into some sacks on that. So am I calling him a big pass rusher? No, I'm not necessarily calling him a big pass rusher. But in terms of him being a strong dude, physical dude, pocket pusher, uh, moving guys on the inside, I think he's good there. But I think he's even better. In an, in an odd front, coming off the ball, getting hands on people, sustaining, you know, contact or whatever at the line of scrimmage and shedding and releasing. So he's more of a 3-4 defensive end for me, and I think that's most of where he, where he played. You know, Baylor, sometimes they did some things where he would play like a 4-3 defensive end. They, they kind of ran both. But um, if you're going to put James Lynch at defensive end, I would rather him two-gap. I would rather him be a two-gap kind of guy than a one-gap penetrator, but... Uh, those are just my thoughts. Now, my player number three is Marlon Davidson from Auburn, man. The Auburn kids were very impressive. And it's crazy because if you watch his film, he played defensive end. They had him as a standing edge guy uh, for a lot of the time. He moved around the DM, but he moved around the D line, but he was a standing edge guy for the most part. And I kept watching him. I was like, man, dog, when they put him inside, he's good. Like, if they just consistently put him at three tech, he'll be smoking the hell out of people. Um, but Auburn didn't consistently put him at three tech. But I think he made most of his fans at the Senior Bowl. I think that's when he got a lot of his attention. And what did they do at the Senior Bowl? They lined his ass up at three tech, and he started smoking kids from the inside. So I think that's where Marlon is going to live at. Is he a guy that can play 3-4 defensive end? Possibly. I think if you're a 3-4 team and you're drafting him, you're, he's probably going to be more of a more of a DN than a, you know, outside linebacker guy for you where Auburn had him playing. But um in a in a in a perfect world, I'm putting Marlon Davidson at 3 tech. I'm going to get him a little bigger. Um he's going to keep that keep that quickness and speed and just let him burst and get guys off of him, man. Um and when I say he had a good senior bowl, he had a good day one senior bowl. Uh, he got injured. I think he hurt his foot and he couldn't finish uh, day day two and three. But he definitely made an impression. Um, he made an impression with his day one. And my number two player is Derek Brown. You know, it's interesting. Derek Brown and my number one player are way the same. But uh, Derek isn't, you know, as trim as him. It's just very interesting how that how that works out or whatever, but Derek Brown, he's going to be a one tech for you. I think that's where he's mostly going to exist. Um, he's a very dominant, dominant, dominant player, man. But I think he's also, and I, I want to be careful when I say stuff like this. He was, um, he was really dominant depending on the matchups that you put him in. But I do think he was talented enough to overcome when he ran into good guys. So let me say that first of all. When he ran against um, the Alabama kids, when he ran against the Oregon kids, he ran into a little bit of trouble with those guys. Now, was he talented enough to overcome that? Yes, but he did look a lot different versus the bigger talent or whatever. When he played against the um, the, the um, Florida O-line or whatever, he was just smoking the hell out of the Florida kids, man. And to be fair, he smoked most of the kids that he played against. But like I said, it goes to talent. But that's just me nitpicking because he's a top He's a top. He's a top guy. He's a top tier player. I do think Derrick Brown is a top tier player. It just, um, you know, when it, when it, when it comes to matchup, he's gonna smoke the hell out the kids. But when it comes down to the big fish, he's gonna have to, you know, fight his way out of that. And uh, I do think he showed enough ability to fight himself out of some of those holes, though. So if you get a chance to get Derrick Brown on your team, you get a really good one tech man. So I ain't gonna I ain't gonna sit up here and, you know, act like he's not a good football player. He's still a top ten player in this draft. He's fantastic, but. Um, there are some people that are saying that Derrick Brown's like a, you know, like the third best player on the on the board this year. I'm not saying that so much, but um, Derrick Brown is a really, really good player, and I'm a fan of him. But he's number two. Javon Kinlaw is number one, man. 
Javon Kinlaw is number one. It's interesting because Derrick Brown, I think, in my opinion, is a one tech that can play three techs sometimes. I think Javon Kinlaw is a three tech that can play defensive end sometimes. And they both weigh the same. I think that's very interesting. Um, let me say this too as well, just to kind of be clear. Um, part of my ranking is not only how good you are, but how good you are in conjunction to the job that you're being asked to do. Okay. So Derek Brown is going to exist in a land of one text where there are going to be a lot more double teams. Javon Kinlaw is going to be a three tech for the most part. He's going to be a three tech where he exists in a world of more one-on-one -on -one battles. I think Javon Kinlaw can win more one-on-one -on -one battles than Derek Brown can win being double teamed. If that makes sense. Um, we saw Javon Kenlaw in the senior bowl, one on one battles, and he was kind of smoking the hell out of the kids in the senior bowl. Um, senior bowl practices or whatnot. Uh, I think day one, and I think he kind of just sat down for the rest of the days or whatever. But the day that he was out there, Javon Kenlaw was smoking the hell out of all the senior bowl kids out there. So that just, you know, it just lets you know where he is talent wise. I don't think no one person blocked him. Um, so Javon Kinlaw is going to be a three tech for you. And I think he's going to exist in a way that um, not only is it that his one-on-one -on -one blocks that he's going to go against, he's going to thrive a little bit more, but I think his ceiling is higher than Derrick Brown's as well. Um, I think Javon Kinlaw can develop into a, a really, really, really good player. That's just the vibes that I have on that. Um, am I factoring in his injury with this? No, because I think he has like a um, – like arthritis type of deal or something like that, tendonitis type of situation. So it's one of those situations where his knee hurts, but he just like toughs it out and go plays anyway, right? Like he's been hurt his whole life. It's just that he just tough it out, tough it out. He just go goes and play. Now, if you get Javon Kinlaw for five years and you win a Super Bowl with him, then he's done his job. You know what I mean? He's done his job if he, if he does that. Um, I think some people get too caught up in will this player – be available well, like will this player be on my team for the next 15 years every player won't be on your team for 15 years but if you get six or seven really good years out of out of kenlaw even five you get five really really good years out of javon kenlaw then i think your first round pick was successful you know what i mean where you got where you got five years of really good player on a cheap contract that's what the whole the whole draft is you know designed to do and i think kenlaw knee aside because it's not going to be something that's going to keep him from from playing day one this isn't like a jeffrey simmons type of deal jeffrey simmons last year with mississippi state this ain't a deal with him where he's not going to be playing day one ken law is going to play day one we just don't know what his last snap is going to look like so that's that conversation ken law is going to get on your team he's going to be hurt but he's going to tough it out and he's going to play good football for you he's going to develop and whatever happens happens ken law could have a 10-year career we don't know we just got to wait it out and see. But that's my top 12 list, man. Javon Kinlaw is my number one guy. Tell me what y'all think. I've been reading the chat box in what y'all think. I want to know what the comment sections have to say about this. Um, will we do a live show discussing this? It'll probably be tomorrow. So today's Monday when I'm dropping this. We'll probably do the live show Tuesday. Um, and let y'all kind of react to my defensive tackle board. We'll do it like that. And um, don't forget, on Thursday, we're going to be hosting the live draft party here. So y'all show up on my channel. We're going to be uh, – we're gonna the, the, the phones are going to be lit. Y'all can call in and give your reactions or whatnot. We're going to do an hour pre-draft, and we're going to flow that into the draft, and then we're going to do however the hell long we out here. Whenever, when, However long the damn club is open, we're going to be out here clubbing. Uh, giving reactions, doing phones after the draft. So y'all be sure to tune into that. It should be a fun one. All right, y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski. The Peaky Whiskey is free, man. Shalute.